Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I come today uh, to bring with you some good and some bad uh, ideas about um, uh, animal behavior and uh, human behavior. So which one would you like to hear first, the good ones or the bad ones? Well, for the faces I see, I bet you prefer to hear the bad ones first. So here we go. Well, the bad news are that for decades, even centuries, there's been a misinterpretation by philosophers, scientists, communicators about the uh, animal behavior and the human behavior. Very often, the documentaries we watch on TV, they very often deny amazing prosocial behaviors like empathy, altruism, cooperation, among others. Do you remember Thomas Hobbes' belief that man is a wolf to a man and thanks to society we become good citizens? Well, the problem with this point of view is that for us, uh, from this mental model, it will be very difficult to, uh, to uh, develop healthy relationships, no? because we should mistrust everybody. So it's difficult to develop positive rela relations with another human. It's really tough, believe me. But the good news are that, at least to a great extent, we have found that all these beliefs are wrong. Law of the jungle or survival of the strongest can be applied everywhere. Everywhere, Evil or violence are just a small part of the, f of the story. It's just a small part. So the thesis I bring uh, today to share with all of, of, all of you is that great apes, especially humans, are mainly altru altruistic and willing to cooperate. I'm not saying that violence or competition does not exist. I'm just saying that we have focused too much on the bad side and very little on the good one. So my intention today is to spend at least some time remembering this and other social phenomena that are linked to prosocial behaviors. So let's take a look to some of the research that has been, uh, has been done all over the world about some prosocial uh, behaviors. Um, we will start with some of the first control experiments uh, about cooperation that has been done by Nissan Crawford in the 1930s with chimpanzees. This is one of the first tasks or the first uh, trials that we had almost a century ago. In this task, the researcher locates some food in a boot plank that is hooked with a rope so that it's too heavy to be moved by a single member. There is a need of two people to cooperate and get the reward. So let's see what happens. Okay, the, well, the motivation is not always clear, but it's obvious that they cooperate and synchronize. <laughs> They synchronize to get the food and, and, and share all the fruits. Here we go, there is another trial. <laughs> I guess this, there is a, a lazy chimp that doesn't want to work. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> and then they share all the fruits <laughs> together. It's, it's amazing, don't you think so? Uh, but let's see some more evidence. This is not enough for science. Okay, in, in this task done by Brian Hare and Susie Catuenda, they locate some food in one of the enclosures and they let one of the bonobos in. In the other adjacent enclosure, there is another bonobo that, that has no access to the food. So the one that owns the food has the option to eat all by himself or to unlock the door and let the other individual to com come in and then set all the fruit together. So what would they do? Here we go. They, they, they place the food on the floor, some, fruits of, some pieces of fruit, then the, the other subject enters the room, well, the first subject enters the room, finds the food, and now he can eat all by himself, 
or, as we will see, maybe he chooses to share with his companion. Okay, here we go. Well, the owner unlocks his friend's enclosure and they share all the fruits together. The results show her evidence that Bonobo preferred to share than, no, than monopolize in a selfish way, as many scientists <laughs> would have predicted many years ago. More proofs. We need more proofs. We always need more proofs. In Boso, Guinea, there is a wild community of chimpanzees. One day, primatologist uh, Kimberly Hawkins got to film these images. A male chimpanzee from this community goes straight forward to a tree, to a papaya tree, then he climbs up, gets a fruit, reaches for one fruit, and gets down, walks a little bit to the path, and then he shares his meal with a female, as many of us would have done. <laughs> Touching, isn't it? Okay, so what we have here, what we can know or extract from, from these uh, experiments or researches, research, individuals do not always maximize. We care about others. We don't, uh, we don't uh, try to find our best results always. We care about social preferences, about the group that belongs to us. So we have social preferences as well. Did you, did you know that some parts of the economy system are based on these assumptions of selfishness, competition, violence of the market, uh, all fighting, etc.? Do you remember these beliefs that are uh, under the market assumptions? So survival of the strongest or fight Cannot be, is not useful anymore, no? This, this way of looking at these behaviors is not useful anymore. Okay, but let's see some more research. Franz de Baal and Sarah Brosnan, they found that capuching monkeys get angry if they see a mate receiving more reward for the same effort. And let me explain you this. They, the capuching monkeys learn how to change plastic, plastic coins for, for food, no? for, for animal feed. Okay, later on, a few days later, uh, the researchers started to give to one of the capuchins a better reward, like a grape. Monkeys and humans, we prefer grapes than animal feed. No? So they started to, to, to give a better reward to, to this capuchin. And then they tried to uh, make a, 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 ch a change with the other one, with the victim, the one that was, has been, uh, that felt the injustice, no? Because he saw another mate receiving more reward. So what, what will, they, will he, this uh, monkey will do when he has seen a mate receiving more reward for the same effort, for the same price, for the same plastic coin, no? Like the ones that we use when we play poker. No? Those plastic coins. Okay, when, when monkeys see a mate receiving more reward, that when they feel there is a, a condition of unfairness, they refuse to barter and they throw the plastic coins to the face of the researcher. No? <laughs> so they, they, they are indignated. No? They, they refuse injustice situations. No? So, it is true, it looks like, like maybe monkeys, or, or great apes, of course, uh, they might have some kinds of sense of fairness. Uh, there, there could be a primitive morality in some species, especially primates, but, but I'm in mammals as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about an example right now. American ethologist Mark Bekoff that he's uh, an expert on canids, uh, coyotes, dogs, wolves. Well, he has also found that, that when coyotes or dogs play too rude with the other members, they get expulsed. They are isolated of the game sessions. You know? But um, because 
it's, it seems like they have some sense of, of fairness. No? If they are too rough, too rough to other mem members, they are expulsed, as I told you before. Well, but the, the, the amazing finding that Behkov has, has discovered is that coyotes that are expulsed from the group because they are too rude to other members, they live less time than the other. Mm, their life, lifespan is less. So morality is an adaptive value. It's something that is very useful for us. And think about it for a second. It's coherent to develop norm, social rules, normal re, um, regulations to live in a complex, uh, to live in a complex societies as the primates, as we primates do, because it would be impossible to 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 live in groups without a tendency to be nice to other members and without some kind of regulation. Well, at this point, my, some might be thinking that animals react in this way by instinct, that they don't, they don't uh, think about it, that they don't know what, I, what they are doing. They do it by, a, by an impulse. No? And until recent years, and even today, many people keep on denying the capacity of primates for processing information, no? or feeling emotions, feeling empathy about others, as we do. Okay, for those of you who don't believe that animals are capable of feeling emotions and showing empathy about others, I've got a video for you. Okay, this video is from uh, Coco Foundation. No? Coco is a female gorilla that was taught American Sign Language many years ago by Penny Patterson. Coco is able to express more than 100 words with her hands. We'll see it later. One day, they brought her several kitties to observe her reactions. In this video, we watch how she treats carefully a little kitten. We, need, we know this is some kind of empathy because she adjusts her movement movements to the needs of the recently born animal. This, this, is not, this wouldn't be useful for another gorilla of 100 kilos, no? or 200 kilos, like the male's weight, weight it is. So it is an evidence of our empathy. But there is much more. This is not enough. We need more. We always need more. OK. Coco, as I told you, he, she knows how to express more than 100 words through the American Sign Language that, that she uh, learned uh, watching another human uh, using it. Okay. In this concrete, uh, we are going to watch, uh, we're going to see Coco watching TV. Okay. So, uh, one of Coco's favorite movies is Tea with Mussolini, that I'm, I'm sure the, that you know, you know this, this movie. Okay. If you remember, two people have to say goodbye in a train station, and they may not see each other in a long time. Okay, so he, we ha we've got Coco watching the, this scene on the train station. Uh, a mother has to say goodbye to, to her child, and it, it's, a, it's a sad moment. No? It's, a, it's a moment that is, is tough for the, for the, for the family. Okay, but this is not, this is not a, a big deal. <laughs> let, 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 let me explain you, explain you. When this happens, Coco, Coco usually makes the signs for from, sad, and friend, which proves that she is understanding what is going on on that concrete part of the movie. We're going to see it right now. He says that we should smile, but there is a from, sad, cry, Bad, travel, mother. So she's understanding what is, what's going on on the movie. It's not an instinct, it's not an impulse. They process information, they have, they have emotions, they know how to interpret the, the, what they see on, on TV. Let me, let me give you an example. When, when in the zoos, um, a female gorilla or a female chimpanzee doesn't know how to breastfeed in his child, we show them uh, human mothers breastfeeding 
their children so they can learn how to make it, okay? Because if a, if a primate has been born with, without his or her mother, he or she, well, she hasn't, she didn't have the chance to learn how to, to, to bring the child to, to her breast. And so we, we use this, with this kind of training, no? We, we, uh, tr uh, we um, uh, show them uh, um, scenes of, of movies or, or even one day we brought a real mother with his child uh, to, the, to the enclosure. So the, the chimpanzee, well, in this case, is a gorilla. So the gorilla could learn how to breastfeed in, uh, her own child. No? So this is, this is amazing, don't you think so? But, but what about humans? What about us? We've seen uh, proofs of altruism and cooperation in animals or primates. But what about us? What about our species? So let's take a look to some of the research that has been done by the Department of Comparative Psychology from the Max Planck Institute. Okay, in this first task, well, in, the, in this series of tasks, Felix Warnigan and Michael Tomasello wanted to know whether humans are altruistic by nature or they learn it from the environment. They found that children after under 15 months of age are naturally cooperative with other, with other unknown humans without receiving any type of command or order. In this first task, a strange face that has a problem under the gaze of a, children, of a child. In the condition, the researcher can open the closet because both hands are holding the staff. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me remember you that the, the, the researcher and the child, they have never met before, okay? This is the, in the first, uh, the first occasion they, made, they met each other. It's forbidden to give any kind of order. We have forgiven the, the mother to give any kind of order or a smile that could approve of the child's uh, reactions. So everything, well, almost everything is controlled no? under laboratory conditions. So as you can see, the children help without any command, but let's see more, more evidence. In the next series, the researcher places the books wrongly on purpose, and a book slips from a stack as the adult oh. attempts to place it on the top of the stack. Oh. Okay. Once again, the child corrects the adult. <laughs> okay, but the same happened with the flap task. A spoon uh, drops through a hole, and the adult unsuccessfully tries to grasp it through the small hole. He doesn't know there is a flap on the side of the box, but the children know. <laughs> so, without any command. <laughs> okay, it is great. I love this. <laughs> Okay, in this case, we, with the group of Punset uh, team, we replicated the experiment designed by Warnecken for the TV, and it worked out. I accidentally drop a clothespin on the floor, and I can't reach it. Okay, children helped me very fast. <laughs> but these excellent researchers wanted to know if, uh, if we can find these uh, um, reactions in great apes too. Well, they found is the same results. A researcher drops a lid to the floor and chimpanzee assists without any command. They, they didn't know each other previously. In, in this, in this uh, other task, 
the researcher uh, uses a sponge, a sponge and drops it accidentally as well. Something interesting is that the, the chimpanzee, at first he checks out that it's not uh, edible, no? and then <laughs> he grabs. This is important. <laughs> okay, let me give you some results about this uh, research because it's very important. Some important in the, uh, information. When parents don't educate their children in helping others in this task, health frequency was the same. When an order or command was given, nothing changed. When parents don't educate their children in helping others, helping frequency was similar. It's shared with other great apes, so this means that this trait um, might have begun ma many millions of years ago. When, uh, if playing, if, they, if the boys were playing, they stopped doing it. And if they were having fun, like playing, they stop for, for uh, help the assistants. And even more amazing, if when we reward the children to help more, motivation was less, motivation lower. Okay, so give me some conclusions. There is, for what we have seen today, there is a total different nature than previously thought. Prosocial and altruistic behaviors are basic in primates. It's just that we are poorly trained to emphasize positive issues. This was good many, many million years ago when, when there was danger everywhere and this was, was very useful. But actually, actually, a positive look, positive look is more adaptive. But we are professional at, at detecting deficits, so I, I hope that we can change and we uh, can start to emphasize those positive issues. So believe me, competition or evil are just a small part of the story. The more we focus on the bad things, the more perception of its prevalence we have. This is why my purpose is not, so on, not, is not only to research on these topics, but also to spread the word that prosocial and altruistic behaviors are basic in human nature. In this way, as more and more, more people begin to focus and appreciate this side of the story, the positive feedback loop will make these behaviors more common, which I will hope to contribute to the future happiness of our species, because altruism generates more altruism. So remember, cooperation and altruism are hardwired in us primates. Watch around, be aware of the positive reactions of other humans, and tell your friends, because this is indeed an idea worth spreading. Thank you very much, and hope you to see you soon.